Mr. John Ziegler. Thank you, John. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks very much. I went to go buy a cell phone the other day. Holy shit, can I make it any harder for you just to figure out how much the cell phone cost? I walk into the store, the guy's like, well, we break it up into 24 payments. It's $31 a month. But you're trading in your phone, you're going to get a credit of $15 a month that starts on your third billing cycle. Then we take your line charge, we cut that in half. But there are taxes, you got to pay those taxes up front. But there's a rebate. If you're mailing your receipt, you're going to get back $100 in about 90 days. I'm like, how much is the freaking phone? That's all I do. I went to a bagel store the other day. What happens to people's math skills when they walk into a bagel store? I got behind some lady. She's like, I'm going to get a dozen bagels. Let me get two sesame, two poppy, give me one plain. How many is that? How many is that? <laughs> Five. She's like, well, how many more do I get? How many more? And then it just continued. She's like, I'm gonna get two cinnamon raisin, give me one garlic. How many is that? And I was like, it's eight, but when you buy 12, you're gonna get two free. Yeah, I thought her head was gonna explode. So I try to eat healthy, they make it very difficult. The other night I go to a Dunkin' Donuts. I asked the guy behind the counter, I go, what's the least amount of munchkins I can get? He goes, you can get a one for 35 cents. I'm like, okay. He's like, or you can get 40 for $1.99. <laughs> <laughs> It was one of those Dunkin' Donuts combined with Baskin Robbins. I look over, I go, ooh, do you have soft serve ice cream? He's like, we do. I go, can I get a small cup of vanilla? He's like, well, the machine is broken. I'm like, so you don't have soft serve ice cream? He goes, no, 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 we have soft serve ice cream, but the machine is broken. <laughs> no soft serve ice cream. He goes, you know, you may want to check with them in the Baskin Robbins department. And I'm like, uh... <laughs> And then the kid just comes over and changes his hat. And I'm like an ass. I'm like, hey, uh, how you doing? Do you have soft serve ice cream? I travel a lot for comedy. I just did a whole week in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It's Amish country. I don't know anything about the Amish. I walk into my hotel, the kid working behind the counter is Amish. He's got like the beard and the suspenders. I thought that was pretty cool. But then I get closer, he's got like all these like face piercings and neck tattoos. Confusing to me. I ask him about it, he goes, in Amish culture you get one year, you can go out and do whatever you want. It's called Rum Springer. He's like, oh, it's awesome. He's like, I could, um, I could bang whores, do meth. I don't think that's what they had in mind. I think they meant like go see an R-rated movie, wear colorful socks. Like this, this escalated. I fly a lot, and um, I fly alone. There's always two empty seats next to me. Last time I fly, this uh, young Russian couple gets on board, and they got a little Russian baby, and he was eating lollipops. He was all sticky. He was disgusting, the kid. <laughs> and he kept touching my arms, and my arms got sticky. And then the mother just took out a wet nap, and she just cleaned my arms. <laughs> Like I was another little Russian baby. I want to be nice. I ask them what they do for a living. She's a psychiatrist. He's an anesthesiologist. We take off. The kids to sleep. I go, that's cute. And the father goes, 
I sedated him. <laughs> so we're like two hours into this flight, and the mother starts to freak out. She's checking this little kid for chest compressions, and she's listening for breaths. I'm like, holy cow, I just witnessed like a baby murder? I don't want any part of it. I pretend to be asleep against the window. Then I start to get nervous. I'm like, what if I'm on that reality show? You know that show, What Would You Do? <laughs> now I think my friends and family are just sitting at home going, what a piece of shit. He didn't get it. I pretend to be concerned, but I don't want to be too concerned, because what if they did kill this kid? He could be a crazy Russian doctor. Just be like, you see too much, and then stick me in the neck with a syringe. I got a mom, she's, uh, my mother's 88 years old now. And uh, look, when our parents get old, guys, we have to take care of them. And we have to do stuff sometimes that we don't want to do. Like, take care of them. <laughs> like, as my mother's gotten older, my mother's feet have gotten very callous. I don't know what the hell's going on there. She lives in memory foam slippers all day. <laughs> I went on this infomercial. I found this little wheel that spins. You ever seen this thing? It's like a little mini belt sander. And I bought that. I sit on a chair, I put her feet on my lap, and I take care of her. I do her feet. Guys, there's crazy dust. There's a lot of dust. <laughs> if you walk by my apartment, you would think I was sheetrocking in here. <laughs> I actually put a paper napkin over my mouth when I do it. I'm like, can I get mesothelioma? I'm like, how do you, how do you get that? We just did the whole Medicaid thing. That's a very stressful process. The final step of Medicaid, they send a nurse out to where my mom lives, and they assess her. And based on that assessment, they determine how much aid you can get. We really need this. So I told my mother, I go, look, mom, they're coming. I need you to take a dive. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't try to be all lucid when they show up. Like, you're going down in the fifth. <laughs> I was afraid she wouldn't do that. So I told my brothers and my sister, I go, look, the morning of mom's assessment, we have to go over to her place. And uh, we gotta kind of fuck her up a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Move some furniture around, we set the clocks back. <laughs> I changed out the pictures of the grandkids. <laughs> I put a Korean family in there. <laughs> this is my job, this is what I do for a living. I had a lot of jobs before this. I had a very good job in sales. I made a lot of money, but I hated working in sales because you gotta be very aggressive. I'm not aggressive by nature. They should bring in sales managers to give us pep talks. Be like, just remember team, five no's make a yes. I'm like, yeah, I think that's a rape. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I used to be a teacher. Any teachers here? I taught kindergarten over in uh, Plainview, right here on Long Island. Yeah, thank you. It was weird. I didn't quit cause of the kids. The kids were very cute. I quit cause the parents. Kind of a pain in my ass. <laughs> Give me an example. I had a kid, Eric, very smart, reading and writing on a second grade level. His mom was in my room every day. She's like, I don't think he's being challenged. He's not getting enough homework. What about geography? Shouldn't he be learning geography? Finally, I was like, look, Eric shit in his pants twice this week. <laughs> I'm like, here's a map of the school. Why don't you show him where the bathrooms are? That's My name's John Ziegler. Thank you.